Bitcoin is going down to $28,000. At least that is what is being said by a lot of people on social media right now. So in today's video on to investigate this topic, look at some of the charts that potentially paint a very dire picture for Bitcoin, as well as taking a look at some of the charts and data that actually show Bitcoin is oddly still quite gosh darn bullish. My name is Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. If that's a topic you like to learn about, keep up to date with, then we'll tap on the thumbs up button. Let me know. That would be much appreciated. By the way, every single week, my team and I make wealth mastery. It's a cryptocurrency investor report two times a week to your inbox. The top tips and tricks of the industry, NFTs, token sales, airdrops, altcoin reviews, interviews, DeFi tutorials, and much more. You can sign up for free using the link down below in the description. Now let's go ahead and hop into this topic. Is Bitcoin going to go to Goblin Town, the place of pain and suffering? Well, look, back in 2018, Bitcoin dropped from $20,000 to $3,000, a horrific 85% crash. Yowzers, those are fun times. If the same thing were to happen today, Bitcoin would go down to 10 thousand dollars and i'm bringing this up it's not the twenty eight thousand dollar number obviously just to say there's lots of models that you can work with when it comes down to it i don't think bitcoin is going to ten thousand dollars i guess i'd be happy to prove them wrong man i'd oh the bitcoin i would buy anyway i don't think bitcoin's going to ten thousand dollars i don't think we're going to see an 85 percent crash because fundamentally the market has evolved in very interesting ways that I don't see the premier crypto asset having that kind of crash again. Altcoins, sure, a lot of altcoins are already down 85, 90%. But Bitcoin, I don't feel like an 85% crash is in our immediate future. Now, another thing that we have been talking about, of course, is the impending death cross on the three-day chart, still looking about 10 to 12 days, maybe two weeks away, potentially. So this if it happens, could see Bitcoin dropping by 50%. Now, why do I say that? Because last two times that happened, we had a 50% drop. Does that mean it's going to happen again? No, not necessarily. Moving average death crosses and golden crosses are notoriously finicky indicators. If you look at the one-day charts, for example, we've had, I think, 12 or 13 um, death crosses in Bitcoin's history in the one-day charts. And for about half of them, it's been actually a mark of the bottom. It quickly reversed and the market started bumping again. For the other half, it was, yes, um, the market tanked massively afterwards. So flip a coin, whether or not that's going to be the case. And look, we've only had two death crosses on the three-day charts for Bitcoin. Yes, the last two times it happened, we crashed by 50%. Immediately afterwards, does that mean it's going to necessarily happen again? No, but you know, food for thought. If that does happen, well, it gets us down to around a twenty thousand dollar Bitcoin. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Twenty thousand dollar Bitcoin. Now, I did a highly scientific poll over here on Twitter. It's still going. If you'd like to throw your hat in the ring in terms of putting your opinion on, but the question is, do you think we're heading to twenty eight thousand dollars? 36.7% of you said yes, 48.4% no, and of course, as always, 14.9% with the right answer, don't care, stacking sats. It's always a good time to stack sats, rain or shine, stack that Bitcoin. That's what I do anyway. Now, is the crowd correct here? A lot of people will say that when the majority thinks something to happen is going to happen, the opposite's going to happen. So would that be the contrarian point of view here to say that, well, look, most people think that we're not going down there, so we're definitely going down there, or is the crowd right in this situation? Some interesting thoughts to leave you with anyway. The Rational Root shared a very interesting chart showing, basically, uh, this is Bitcoin on-chain bottom indicators, and the current on-chain bottom indicator brings us in at $28.1,000 as the bottom floor level for Bitcoin. As he points out, we're right at the mezzanine level right now, or close to it anyway. So, do we get down there? 
Do we have enough fear in the equity markets to push us down to this $28,000 level? You got to remember, when did this happen previously? Well, we had, of course, the Black Swan event that happened in early March 2020. We also had, of course, the hash wars between Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, and of course, both of which are much less prominent these days. I think Bitcoin Satoshi Vision is just fading away. Bitcoin Cash still struggling along, but of course, Bitcoin won that war. And of course, that crashed the price when it happened. Big traumatic events in the market tend to do that. Here is one chart as well from Peter Brandt, the famous trader. He said the completion of a bear channel typically results in a decline equal to the width of the channel, or in this case, a hard test of $32,000 just down here. My guess is $28,000. As he says, this does not make me a hater of Bitcoin. Of course not, man. People always get so excited about this, but if it really does happen, it's a chance to buy more, to average into your position, to, you know, take the long-term view, which may not be easy if you aped all your money in yet, to watch your bags be deeply in the red while other people are still have money to buy the dip. I, I get it. I get it, guys. It's investing and with all the fear going on in the equity markets and about the economy and the recession and the inflation prices, not as many people have money to ape into Bitcoin, do they? You. Then we have, of course, the prediction from uh, BitMEX CEO, former BitMEX CEO, Arthur Hayes. He predicts coming crypto carnage. We've talked about this prediction before, of course. He's saying that by the end of Q2, we are going to see Ethereum at $2,500 and Bitcoin at $30,000. So he is just a little bit above that $28K number that we see floating around social media so much right now. Now, does that mean uh, any of these predictions are going to be right? Who knows, right? It's easy to throw numbers around and somebody will be right in the end and then they can come back and claim all the glory, right? But there's definitely a lot of people calling for lower prices. Where those end up, $28,000 seems to be a pretty common number. And we do, of course, have those fears still deeply in the market. We have the Fed meeting happening tomorrow. And basically, there's going to be an interest rate raise. That's happening. Jerome Powell said that's going to happen. The only question is how much he's going to raise interest rates by. Now, he said 0.5% is on the table, 50 basis points, right? If he does a 75 basis point raise, I think that would cause a lot of panic in the market. If he magically raises it by less, only 0.25% or 25 basis points, I think the market would react rather favorably to that. But regardless, I still think it's crazy that here we are, Bitcoin investors worrying about what the Federal Reserve is doing, man. Bitcoin was designed to take the central banks down. And here we are all talking about what's Jerome Powell going to do? <sighs> but unfortunately, that is how most of the market is reacting because we have got that institutional money crowd into Bitcoin right now. And they've got lots of money and they do move the market. And unfortunately, those guys are not necessarily in it for the revolution and they are watching the Fed and dumping Bitcoin at the first sign of trouble. Psh, institutional investors, my butt. Anyway, let's move on to some more positive charts, uh, we could say. These are some interesting ones I want to share with you because there's always two sides to the coin, right? There's a lot of charts you can look at that actually paint a very bullish picture for Bitcoin right now. Now, of course, we could still have that short-term volatility, but long-term, the big picture looking pretty awesome, if you ask me. Now, this chart here, you can see what happened last time the Fed came up with a subsequent rate hikes after being zero for a long time. So this is the last time it happened right here, right there, guys. We had a rate raise and look what Bitcoin did. Blammo. This marked the start of the 2017 bull market. Think about that. Think about that. That's very interesting, isn't it? Now, here we are once again in a time of Fed rate raises. Are we looking at a new bull cycle as a result of that? Because as we discussed at great length on the channel before, 
when you have Fed rate hikes, there is short-term pain in the markets, but after a year, equity markets finish up. And if the equity markets are finishing up, Bitcoin's probably going up too because they've been heavily correlated. Here's another interesting one. Huge amount of Bitcoin holders still in profit. 70, 70 to 72% of Bitcoin accounts are still in profit even at these prices. Now, this is significantly higher ratio. You can see right here. Significantly higher ratio than the COVID dump. Significantly higher ratio than the 2018 bear market lows. So a lot of people bought a lot of Bitcoin back during this time here. And even with the 45% drawdown, 70% of holders are still in profit. My guess is that no one's really planning on selling anytime soon, which is exactly where the one-year auto wave comes in. This just continues to blow my mind. New all-time high record, 65.4% of Bitcoin has not moved in over a year. Hodlers are crazy, man. They have zero intention of selling. I'm not planning on selling my Bitcoin. Are you planning on selling your Bitcoin? I'm holding for long-term wealth preservation, man. This is gold 2.0. This is my wealth preservation. This is my inflation hedge. And you might say, oh, how's an inflation hedge when it's down 45%? I didn't say it's not volatile. But look at the five-year chart, the four-year charts for Bitcoin. It just keeps going up over time. Come back in two, three, four years, that Bitcoin today that you're stacking or the Bitcoin even bought at $69,000, like this sucks as an inflation hedge, that Bitcoin's probably worth half a million dollars or three or $400,000 in four or five years. Don't tell me that's not beating inflation because that is beating the living heck out of inflation. Short-term volatility, long-term going to the moon. Got to keep that in mind. And another great chart here for Bitcoin. This is the amount of Bitcoin sitting on exchanges. It just keeps going down. Retail keeps buying. Whales keep buying. Institutions, those guys, they keep buying too, apparently. I keep buying. A lot of you guys I know are still buying Bitcoin and you're taking it off of exchanges. You're dumping it into your cold storage. It's crazy stuff. Price going sideways, price going down. People keep stacking Bitcoin. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing when you really start to think about it. Also, miners, this is a chart of the Bitcoin miners. So we can see here, this is the miner reserve, the purple line here, just keeps going up. Miners are not interested in selling at these prices. Miners are clever. They know higher prices are coming. Why the heck would you sell now? What's the point? Just wait and sell at higher prices. You can see the miners sell into strength. So this is when the market started picking up a lot of steam. We had huge amounts of Bitcoin sent to exchanges from miner wallets. They're hodling right now, largely. This is an interesting one too. From Willy Woo, Bitcoin price is sideways because of Wall Street selling futures contracts in a macro risk-off trade. Regardless of the CME contracts being total paper junk garbage, Puh. the reality is they are important. They are an important part of the Bitcoin market. Even though they drive zero spot demand, the reality is that those uh, spot, uh, sorry, those futures markets are very, very popular. But while all of this futures selling is happening, as Willie Wu points out here, institutional money buying spot Bitcoin. And we've had some massive withdrawals happen over the last few weeks from Coinbase, like a 6,000 Bitcoin withdrawal, a few others of like you know, a few hundred million dollars a piece. Those are institutional players stacking up some Bitcoin. That's exactly what that is. There's also, of course, lots of bullish charts if you want to look at. There's lots of scary charts saying scary things. Of course, any major dumps in the market are obviously an opportunity, but that being said, a TA analyst here, he's pointing out the interesting similarities between the basically the start of the 2017 bull run and some of the price action that happened there and relative similarities just on a bigger time frame of what is happening currently in the markets. Spot Bitcoin ETF gets approved, man, and we get that chart all over again. I'm telling you, 
I'm telling you, that's what would freaking happen. It would be nuts. Also, this one from Stock Money Lizard. Bitcoin, different fractals, accumulation phases have always shown the following pattern, a failed breakout, a bottom uh, rebound at support, final failed breakout test before a bull run. And of course, what are we looking at right now for Bitcoin? A very similar pattern forming up. And look, we could look at dozens of charts here if we wanted to, because there's definitely a lot of them. Another great one here from uh, Tech Dev: Bitcoin upside asymmetry still looks very strong. So that's the entity adjusted dormancy flow here for Bitcoin. You can see we're at the kind of bottoms that have previously marked periods just before major new upsurge cycles for Bitcoin. Interesting, right? Interesting. Now, all this being said, final thought for the video here. If Bitcoin really goes back to $28,000, like some people do believe, I am going to back the freaking truck up, man. If it doesn't happen, then I'm just going to keep stacking Bitcoin. Probably more aggressively, as I have been, since uh, we first went under $42,500, I've started buying Bitcoin quite frequently, putting a decent amount of money into Bitcoin every single week. Basically, as long as we keep trading under the 200-day simple moving average, I will continue that behavior. Buying at these levels, I believe, is a privilege. I'm not saying go and ape your entire life savings into Bitcoin right now or go all in at this second. I've been dollar cost averaging. I've been stacking sats. That is how winning is done long term in Bitcoin. Anyway, just my two Satoshis for the day. Let me know down below if you think Bitcoin is going to go to $28,000 or not. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.